five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Hi, my name is Margo Rogers, and today I'll be presenting my creative IOP discussing the multi-components of the character Don Coffey in The Green Mile by Stephen King. Um, thesis. Through analyzing the multi-components of the character John Coffey, how it shaped readers' interpretation of this character as a whole, and the creative aspect of my presentation is the painting I created to represent John Coffey um, visually and his characteristics. Rationale. Um, although the novel contains sentences to portray imagery of John Coffey, it only expresses his characteristics individually, and so by creating a painting, it allows me to express John Coffey visually um, with all his characteristics present. Um, in my painting, I thought it was important to focus on things like style, texture, and color, like making dark values represent um, evil and lighter colors to represent good. Um, I also created each element to where it could fit into more than one of John Coffey's characteristics, so then I formed a relationship between the character John Coffey and my painting. Um, I also tried to make this painting more abstract to capture my young audience's attention. Um, and yeah, I felt that I chose to do a painting because I felt that I could best express John Coffey visually and give a better understanding of his character as a whole. Um, the characteristics I will be discussing is our first interpretation of John Coffey and our development from then, his supernatural features, his two expressions, one loss, one focus, his connection with nature, his religious aspects, and his depressed side. Reader's first interpretation of John Coffey usually tends to be very negative. One of the first senses that his name is associated with is the rape and murder of the Dederick twins. So not only does this create an image of a criminal in our minds, but Stephen King goes on to use Paul's perspective to even intimidate the readers in the novel, describing him as the biggest man I've ever seen, um, six foot, eight inches tall, muscles in every direction, um, broad shoulders, and scarred legs. So how do we go from this very negative interpretation of John Coffey to a more positive one is through Paul's perspective giving hints to the readers and through John Coffey's childlike features. And so one of the first hints that um, Paul gives to his readers is he says, he looks like he could have snapped the chains that held him as easily as you might snap the ribbons on a Christmas present. But when you looked in his face, you knew he wasn't going to do anything like that. So this just shows that Paul sees something that's good in John Coffey, and this is how he's going to express to the readers the development in John Coffey's character. Um, also, John Coffey's childlike features is expressed as he's scared of the dark sometimes, um, requesting to Paul for a nightlight in the Green Mile. And also, Paul does something he's never done to a prisoner before, which is offer him his hand, and he describes him as, um, he took my hand with surprising gentleness, and this is how John is going to take his readers um, with a surprising effect. And so how I portrayed this in my painting is I have the movement of this image showing the dark values on all sides of my painting. So first you see the dark, the evil interpretation of John Coffey, and then you're getting this splatter of light, which are the hints that Paul and John in the novel are trying to give to the reader, saying this character is going to be good. Other indicators of good is that when I typically think of sin, I think of the color red. And so by making the undershirt of John Coffey green, green is a complementary color to red. And so in paintings, those two colors are usually used to either darken each other's values when you mix them or mask each other. So just like how Paul and John give hints in the novel, I gave a hint in my painting that John is going to have the ability to mask other characters' sins. And another indicator of good is the warm colors. Is multicolor figure in the painting. Notice I didn't put any cool colors like purple or blue. I only used warm colors because I wanted to direct you to the center of the painting because he has this good inside. He has this warm attraction now to the viewers. Um, we first find out that John has these supernatural features or this magical power when he, hear, when he cures Paul's urinary infection. He's very demanding to Paul, he's like, boss, boss, you must come here, I need to heal you. And we know that this power is good because he says, I just want to help. Um, also, we know that he's able to heal because he repeats gone twice. He says, pain were gone, it was gone all right. Um, also, through this, we find out that when John touches someone and he heals them, he takes in their evil and he takes in their pain and spits out this thing that looks like 
um, black clouds that's described as little tiny bugs, like insects. Um, the second miracle is with Mr. Jingles. Again, very demanding. He wants to save Mr. Jingles. He has this need to save other characters in the novel. Um, also, again, we're reassured that John can heal when he says, Mr. Jingles, absolutely all right. Not a twist to his backbone, not a single lump pokey at his hide. And our third miracle is with the warden's wife, Melinda. Um, not only can John Coffey sense pain or evil in someone, he says he can see it. He says, I see it, and I can help, reassuring us again that this power is good. Um, also, we find out in this passage that John Coffey is, is so powerful that when he heals Melinda, objects are moving around the house and falling and breaking. And again, we're reassured that he can heal, saying her eyes have regained their normal shape. Um, how I portrayed this in my painting is the white splatter in the background of John Coffey um, expresses the magic that radiates off of his skin. Also, his multicolored um, figure separates him from being a human in the painting, and the black dots surrounding him represents um, the black cloud or black insects that John Coffey spits out. Also, there's a mouse painted in my painting to represent Mr. Jingles, and he's directly placed in John Coffey's hand to show that this power can only be expressed through touch. And also the mouse is white to represent that when John Coffey heals someone, um, he makes them pure, pure again. He heals all the aspects of evil in them. Um, also, we find out that John Coffey has two expressions. Um, one is described as lost, as if he were floating far, far away. And one is described as sharp, focused. Um, he gets this expression when he senses that someone near him is in pain and he knows if he gets close enough to that person, he can heal them. It's described as sh uh, strange eyes sharp with some need I could not understand, sharp and blazing. And so how I portray this is for the lost eye, I took half of his face and I chose to do a light gray because gray is in between the colors black and white and I feel that's exactly the state that John is in when he's in this lost expression. He's stuck between um, not being able to be like a regular human and not being able to help. He's experiencing this pain all the time that he can't help the person because he can't get near to them. And for the focus expression, I chose a bright blue because when I think of bright blue, I think of like a clear sky or clear water and clear to me um, expresses the focus expression. We find out that John Coffey has this connection with nature in part five of the novel when the guards um, escape John from the Green Mile to go heal Melinda. Um, Paul describes him as, I will never forget the way he looked at it or how he crumbled it beneath his broad, handsome nose so that it could release its smell. He's also described as caressing the night, never taking his eyes off the night sky. And I just, I believe that John has this relationship and connection with nature because nature is always going to be there. It's everlasting and he can rely on its beauty, something he can't rely on in humans. And to portray this in my painting, I have two elements, um, the moon behind John Coffey's head and more like water at the bottom of him, him to portray like a river or a river bank because I feel that in the novel these are the two most prominent features that describes John Coffey's connection with nature. Uh -oh. um, for religious, this can be related to his supernatural features, having the ability to have magic and cure someone and make someone pure again, relates back to Jesus Christ having the ability to heal someone and make them pure again. Also, after Paul is healed, he describes his experience as an authentic praise Jesus, the Lord is mighty. So after Paul is healed, he puts this connection with his readers that the feeling of being healed, he felt like it was being healed by Jesus Christ. So we have the connection between these two people. Um, also, towards the end of the novel, when the guards discuss John's execution, they say, I mean, we're fixing to kill a gift of God. So the guards, especially Paul, are associating that Paul is this character brought down from God. He's a gift from God. So we have this religious aspect of John Coffey. And to portray this, I have the contrast between the dark and light values in the painting, um, showing that it gives an illusion that John has wings behind him like an angel. And then also the moon behind John Coffey's head can also be served as a halo because 
when Jesus is in portraits or he's associated in paintings, he is um, accompanied with a halo behind his head. Um, also at the bottom of my painting, I painted John Coffey's name to highlight the J and the C to give the impression that he has the same initials as Jesus Christ. Um, I felt that this passage left alone can express how John Coffey really feels a burden on his life. We don't really know how John Coffey feels in the novel until he expresses himself to Paul because we know he cries all the time. He has these endless whip, weeping tears that's described in the book, but when he expresses himself to Paul, he's repeatedly saying, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired of being lonely, I'm tired of being left in the dark, I'm tired of people being ugly to each other. This really expresses how John Coffey feels and the pressure he has um, with competing and battling against evil because he can only shed so much light. And to show this, I have a tear running down John Coffey's face to express his sadness in the novel. And then the dots around uh, John Coffey kind of look like they're coming in to suffocate him. They're surrounding him. Um, it just really shows how the light he expressed can only go so far and the evil, it just keeps coming around him. It's like bugs attracting to light. Um, now with discussing all of John Coffey's characteristics, I'm going to refer back to my painting and I want you to see, I created this painting because I wanted you to see the beauty of this character as a whole because art to me is beautiful and it defines what's beauty in this world and I believe that Stephen King put this character in the novel to show compassion, love, and redemption and someone who truly cares about the good in the world. And before, my, before the end of my presentation, I want to direct your attention to this quote made by Melinda Moores after she was healed by John Coffey. She says, I dreamed of you, she said in a soft, wandering voice. I dreamed you were wandering in the dark, and so was I. We found each other. And so I think, I believe the main message Stephen King wants his readers to take from this is that we all need to be more like John Coffey. We all need to be encouraging the good to come out of people because one person isn't able to battle against all evil. We all need to come together and produce good in this world full of evil because that's what John Coffey is as a whole. He's essentially this candle in a world full of darkness. Thank you.